Hey everyone, I hope you're well. Okay, so this is not gonna be a seven calorie shell of the stars and the blackness between them. Yes, it is. But it'll be other things too. See you in a minute. Hi everyone, it's Jerry. Welcome back to this mega review of all the books. So I reread The Stars and the Blackness Between Them, Between Them, yes, The Stars and the Blackness Between Them by Janata Petrus. I read it as part of the hashtag read a damn book thing that I'm doing with Evelyn from the internets. Um, and yes, so I, I had read this already. I read it again with her and I purchased my own copy because I really enjoyed the book and I also bedazzled it and annotated it so you will see that. So this was published by Dutton um, and Janata won the Coretta Scott King Award um, and I am very proud of her for having done so. So this, there's some controversy about this book, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But first, let me go through the seven calorie shells. And the reason why I didn't want to spend too much time on this is because I believe I have, I mean, there's, I have an interview with Janata. Um, and then I also have a, like, review discussion with Evelyn from the internets. So like, I've talked about this book a lot. Um, this was a reread. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it. Um, but I will just take you through the seven calorie shells. So world building, I thought that the world building was uh, very good, but that is one of the controversial points, which I'll get to in a second. Um, so I thought it was really good. Uh, the magical elements, I thought the magical elements were also very good. The magic was really subtle. It was a mixture of like love magic and um, altar work and also like good old grannies who float. Um, so really good magical elements that I really appreciated. It was definitely relevant for Black Queer Lives. It's a story about um, queer characters and about queer characters um, and immigration. And I thought that was really important. Um, we've got uh, themes of belonging, themes of coming out, themes of um, uh, mental health and wellness, themes of like... Um, incarceration and the industrial prison con uh, complex and collective work and responsibility, like just so many important themes. Uh, I thought the characters were really soft and really well done and also the point of view is from like a young uh, queer girl who uh, has to immigrate to the United States from Trinidad and Tobago and who struggles in that and tries to find a place for in the world. And in terms of the reading experience, there's poetry. Um, I listened to this book read by the author, uh, Janata, who's got a s stunning voice and is a poet herself. And so it was lovely to hear this book uh, really impacted by her own like tone and timbre and cadence. So so I, I really enjoyed this. This is a seven calorie shell book for me. Let me let me let me address the controversy. So this book has been criticized because um, it is it has been some feel as though it has been advertised as a book like by a Caribbean author or a Caribbean book that somehow um, sheds light on the experience of being a young person living in Trinidad. This book was written by an, an, an American author born and raised in the U.S., which I think, I think Janata was born and raised in the U.S., I'm pretty sure, in Minnesota, I want to say. She's of black, um, yeah, she was born on Dakota land of black Caribbean descent. So she is, like me, um, first generation North American. She's American, I'm Canadian. I really identify with her in a lot of ways. Um, and there are critiques of her accent, there are critiques of the way that she wrote Trinidad into the story, there are critiques of her rendering of the Caribbean voice, of the Trinidadian voice, among other things. And I'm not going to do ju justice to these arguments for sure. Um, there are a lot of, well, there are a few videos that you can watch if you want to hear those critiques and all you got to do is look for them. Um, but I'm not going to give counter arguments to those critiques because that's not 
what I'm here to do. But there is one thing that I do need to say. I do need to speak back um, to one of the critiques that I've heard. And it's not so much a counter argument, but more of the importance of putting my voice into this discussion. If you were born in North America and your parents are from the Caribbean and you have very little ties to the Caribbean, then the language that you are going to inherit is not going to be current. Um, and the values and the, um, the habits that you will see in your day-to-day -day life are not going to be the same. Like they're going to be kind of frozen in time. So for example, my parents left Trinidad in the 60s and 70s. The Trinidad that they remember is a Trinidad of the 60s and 70s. It's not a Trinidad of the 80s, the 90s, the aughts, the after aughts, right? It's, that's not the world that they grew up in and that, they're, that they know. So even when they go back home, it's a very different place. It operates differently. It has different rules and so on. So they know Canada. They don't know Trinidad. They know Canada of 2021. They don't know Trinidad of 2021. They don't even know Trinidad of 1999. Um, and so if, if, if you're a child of someone, um, or, you know, from the Caribbean, you're not going to be as connected um, or you may not be, because I know some people really are. Like my cousin is way more connected to Trinidad than I am. Um, but you may not be connected as much as others might be. And so I think the question is, can you still tell stories about, can you still tell, still, bleh, can you still tell stories about the places that your parents grew up in? Um, if you didn't grow up in those places and you are, are separate from, from those places, like, from those places, like what right do you have to speak? What right do you have to tell stories? Um, and I think you have every right to tell those stories. And I think that's an unpopular opinion. Um, so I guess some of the critiques that I've heard of this book are that the, the author does not use the appropriate terms, the author's accent is bad, the author has a very stereotypical and narrow view of Trinidad. Um, and I'm not in a position because I didn't grow up in Trinidad, I don't know how Trinidad operates societally and psychologically and sociologically. But I, I can't wrap my head around the idea that because of the author's distance from Trinidad that she shouldn't write what she wrote or she shouldn't write as she wrote. Because I think that, I imagine if I wrote a book like this and I, I, I wouldn't, I'm not, I, I don't think I have the courage to do that. But I think that writing a book like that could potentially bridge my feeling of disconnection from where I, my people are from. And it could be healing to do that right and and to speculate and so i that that is just one thing that i want to say about that um i think it's important i think that a lot of us are sort of reaching reaching back to these places that we might lose ties to after a couple of generations and are holding on and grasping to you know some measure of understanding of where we came from. And I think that should be okay. I do appreciate um, some of the comments that have been made about, about that grasping, that in doing so, you, stereo, you can stereotype or universalize the experience or even like bind um, your parents' country to a very outdated and narrow rendering and that that can be extremely damaging especially when you combine that with the publishing power that North American writers have versus writers in the Caribbean and that if this pattern continues then you will have more stories written about the Caribbean by people who are not from the Caribbean 
and those stories will perpetuate and can perpetuate very damaging views. And I think that that's an important point to be mindful of. Um, so I, I do get I do get that. I don't think that I am. I don't think that I could ever be objective, but I, I certainly think that I have bias, strong bias in this because I found that this story was a very important one for me. Um, because I always, I often wonder what would it be like to be me and out, and could my wife and I visit our family in Trinidad, and what would that be like? So uh, a very religious black family, what would that, what would that be like? Um, on one side of my family. So, yeah. So I, I just needed to address that controversy and just to put this. I, I don't have fully formulated uh, conclusions, but I thought that I would share that because. Um, there's critique, and I think it's important to critique, and I think that um, it's important to critique responsibly and to find ways to support, um, in particular, black queer voices who are writing and trying to write in a self-emancipatory and potentially collectively emancipatory way. I really enjoy the stars and the blackness between them. I want more from Janata Petrus. And I want to see where she goes with um, some of the feedback that she received, the acclaim and also the critical feedback, and to see where she goes with this. So that's my TED Talk. Give me something purple, something blue. Give me some blackness. Um, and let me know what you think of uh, what you found of the book, what you think of uh, some of the, the controversy, the questions that have come up. And uh, yes, I will sh come around. My throat is dry. I have two more books. Um, let me show you. So the cool thing about reading this a second time was that I sort of knew what was coming. I used purple and I got really funky with my annotations, magic. Um, and lots of arrows and I started to introduce these crystal stickers that I got from Michaels because I feel like crystals were very obvious. And I read this book again with the critiques in mind. Oh my God, so sweet. There was so much sweetness in this story. You can see my comments here. I said here, I wish every black queer girl could have someone like Queenie there for them. So beautiful that she didn't end the chapter there. It ends in ceremony. I loved the Queenie character. It was really cool. So yes, and I think I used some stickers. Yeah. It's a good time to be alive. And I wrote, ugh. I really was into just like writing across the page. I'm sure I cried here a few times. Yeah, there was just like a lot, a lot of good stuff. And lots of poetry, some shooting stars there. Is that it? I think th I thought I had one more. Let me just see here. At the end, yeah, there we go, yeah, beautiful like the moon. And that is the lovely Janata. All right.
So that is my review of and commentary of The Stars in the Blackness Between Them by Janata Petrus. We want more from you, sis. So there you go. And then the next book, I'm actually going to switch up the order. The next book is going to be The Year of the Witching. And there was some serious annotation in this. I don't believe that I did a review of this. Um, so I will just make sure because my voice is starting to get raspy and I want to pause. So if I did do a review of this, then you won't see one. And instead you will see in the next video, a review of Deathless Divide. Okay, read with purpose.